Well, welcome, welcome everyone. This is Life Change, and I want to welcome you. I want to greet you in that wonderful name of Jesus. But I'm just waiting for those people that need to tune on, to log on. Welcome to Life Change. Welcome to Espinetia Estate, into my home. And I thank God that you invited me and you welcomed me into your home. God bless you all. Amen. Well, I am Ronnie Mudley, the uh, Overseer of Faith Ministry International. I am the Dean of Faith Bible College, and I am the CEO of Life Change Foundation and Consultancy. I just want to welcome all of you, and once again, get into this platform to understand the, the need and the anointing and the potential that lies on leaders, and you are one of them. You are a leader in the making, and I believe that everything lies on us today. And therefore, I wonder if you were with me from Monday onwards and follow the sequence of my training, follow the sequence of my teaching, you'll understand that leaders have a huge, not a burden, but a huge challenge on their shoulders. And if you are with the Lord, you can definitely make it through, not just for these 21 days, but for a greater time in the name of Jesus. Amen. So right now, even as we get in, I just want to pray and welcome you. Father, I thank you and I bless you for your children that I've tuned on into Facebook live. And Lord, even as I share your word, I ask you to touch my tongue, which is a pen of the ready writer. Father, you touch my heart, which is a tablet, you prepared your word. But most of all, touch my mind, that I walk with the mind of Christ and minister to your children with a mind of Christ. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' precious name. Well, God bless you all. Welcome to JCK Singh. Most of us, Dana Raju. Welcome to Sharon. It's wonderful having you all with us, Sandra. Welcome. It's good having you all. And just take your pen. Get a pen, get a pay. Do whatever you have to do. Take that notes if you have to. Because I believe that this is a time that God will empower you and strengthen you. Amen. Welcome, Lorraine Singh. Good to have you with us, my child. Now, I'm going to read from the book of Numbers. Book of Numbers, chapter 13. I'm going to take it from verse 26 to 30 and bring understanding to the entire thing because you are a leader. Tell your neighbor next to you, I'm a leader. That's right. You are a true leader. Leaders are those who never quit at the finishing line. I want to say, I want to say the game. Leaders are those who refuse to quit at the finishing line. So verse 26 in the book of Numbers, chapter 13, reads as follows. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole assembly, the whole Israel community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. They reported, they, they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses an account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Enoch, that means the giants, etc. And of course, they began to complain in verse 37, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take the possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. The reason why Caleb silenced them is because everyone began to complain that it's impossible to get in and take over the giants, or get into the land which is a promised land. I've discovered that in life not everything makes sense. Not everything makes sense. Not everything that we hear do we understand. We also have fear of what's going around and what's going to happen after 21 days of this lockdown. It's only natural. Natural. But only time will tell because I believe that obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, let me say this up, uh, up front so you'll understand what I'm beginning to say. As a child of God, God never allows us to get saved and go to heaven. God allows us to get saved and remain in the same earth where we were born, where he placed us, in order to become a light and a salt in that earth. Now, you cannot be a light and a salt hidden under a bowl. You cannot be a light hidden under a shelter. You can only be that when you get out into the world. That means that the world is looking towards you as a leader 
to encourage, to empower, to build them, to develop them, and to make them stronger. Yet comes a wonderful man, Caleb, with a positive attitude in a negative situation. He knew the people's negativity. Because verse 31 says, Then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land, a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it is a land that devours its inhabitants. It's a bad land, it's a crippling land, it's a land that's going to kill you. And all the people that we saw in it are great high, that means they're giants. And they began to say, and we seem to see, uh, we were like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. And so they began to bring all doom and gloom. The towering giants of the Bible may be in ancient history, but God's people today are required to do battle with far more fearsome breathe and far more different breathe than giants. Giants today are not with guns and ammunitions or slings and bows, but with fear and intimidation called disease and sickness. And here comes a young man, Brother Hans Kassoon from all the way from Nalspreit. Welcome, sir. So here comes a young man called Caleb, who's 85 years old. And 85 is not generally a good age to begin fighting giants. But most people will consider reckless, foolish, and ill-advised. But Caleb, however, was not most people. He was a man of faith. He was a man with, with the fear of God. He had wandered through the wilderness for 40 years, motivated by the promise from God. And now at last, the time had come for him to claim those promises. Here is my question to you. How often have you stood in church and you begin to you begin to download the promises your pastor preached from the Bible? So it's not your pastor's promise, but it was the Lord's promise from the Bible. But now when a challenge comes, we don't look at those promises that we spoke out of our mouth. We begin to look at the fears and the doom and the gloom. Now listen, this is Caleb we're talking about. Caleb was following Joshua. He was asked to lead the people. Who was asked to lead the people? Joshua. And Caleb was following Joshua. Was Caleb as equal to Joshua? Well, you and I can say yes. Because they were brothers together. They went out to the wilderness together. They went to the promised land. And when they came back, only Caleb and only Joshua said, hang on, we can take on these people. We'll enter the promised land. And of course, long story short, we understand that God selected Joshua, and I'll explain it a little later. And Caleb submitted in following Joshua as a leader. He was not jealous, but committed. Joshua was with him spying the land in the forest. And Caleb, Caleb followed Joshua faithfully. Every leader is selected from amongst you and I. Every pastor is selected from amongst you and I. Every president is selected from amongst you and I. Hebrew 5 teaches us that. And it teaches us how we need to graduate them into the position with respect and assist them to lead. You see, when you begin to understand about election and you vote a leader in, it's our job to respect and graduate that leader into respect. We cannot graduate him as our buddy anymore. We're going to graduate him with respect. Because why? You may ask why. Because God chooses him. Many are called, but a few are chosen. Let me say this. We are all called. We are all called in ministry. But a few people began to step forward and by faith began the church as a pastor. Many people or non-pastors have more opinion than the pastor in a church. Isn't that strange? Open your own church. Then see what your opinion is. So it's important to respect the president you placed. And it teaches you that God himself promotes you. But he watches you. How you submit to your brethren. Whom God promoted into leadership. And Caleb comes to Joshua. And he begins to submit to him. And I want to listen to what Joshua 14 does. Joshua chapter 14 verse 10. And now behold the Lord has kept me alive. This is Caleb speaking to Joshua. J 
Just as he said, these 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke his word to Moses, while Israel walked in the wilderness, and now behold, I am this day 85 years old. Verse 11 says, I'm still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength now is, my, is as my strength was at 40, for war and for going and coming. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day, for you heard on that day how the Anakim were there. With great fortified cities, it may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. Now listen to Joshua's answer with no reservation. With no reservation, because a true leader is a true father who will always prepare his ceiling to be his children's or his son's floor. He's never jealous, he's never intimidated of how powerful his son grows, how great, because the father knows until he, until he develops a ceiling, his son cannot climb on top of the ceiling to make it a floor. It's yours and my job to develop those floors as fathers in the name of Jesus. And then verse 13 says, Then Joshua blessed him and gave Abraham to Caleb, the son of Jebunah, for an inheritance. Not just for a, in a gun work it, no, as an inheritance. This is a reward when you serve your leaders faithfully. And I'm going to explain you why just now. So he received it because he served the Lord through Joshua in faithfulness. Now the name of Abraham formerly was Kiriat. Arabah was the greatest man among the Anakim. And the land had rest from war. Literally, when Caleb went in, the land had rest from any war or disease. Why? Because a righteous man of God stepped in, claimed God's promise, called in the power of God to heal and deliver that place. When we begin to know how leaders step into a position, we need to know how to pray them into that position. Now we'll listen to history of the entire story. The reason why God will want you to be faithful to your leader it's not because he wants to make you a slave to your leader. No, 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 sir. Rather, he wants to train you. He wants to develop you in the time when you're submitting because he's harnessing in you a powerful leadership so that one day you become a leader. In fact, God is watching at you right now to develop you a leader. Why? Because you know how to be faithful. You know how to serve your leader. You're not a slave. You are serving. Why? Because your leader cannot do what you can do better than your leader. And God is saying, serve me voluntarily. And once you do that, serving God voluntarily, you're submitting to your leader. God begins to mold you and shape you to become a greater person. Now, listen to the history of the entire story. 45 years earlier, the fledging nation of Israel had gathered at the border of the promised land. God had freed them from the land, from the hand of the oppressors in Egypt through wave after wave of earth-shaking, shattering plagues, each designed to showcase the omnipotence or the power and the limitless of a God, who is a God of this universe. Welcome Dr. Lin Tu. Welcome Cecil and Pele from Randburg. Now, as Israel has a journey towards Canaan, God proved himself again and again by performing the impossible. He brought water out of the rocks. He brought bread out of the heaven. He brought kale from the skies, quail from the skies. And God protected and provided for his people every step of the way. And now here yeah, they were at the very border of the land he had promised to give them. So here comes Caleb, a leader with a positive mindset. And I want you to understand this. Himself as Caleb, and 11 other men were selected. They were handpicked. In fact, you can say they were handpicked like an American idol or a South African idol to enter a promised land as spies. They were selected out of a million people. And there's still only 12 of them were selected to save, uh, survey the land and bring back news of its inhabitants. Upon the return, all 12 men agreed that the land truly flows with milk and honey, according to Numbers chapter 13. But they could not agree on what to do about it. They had found more milk and honey in Canaan. They had found a land filled with strong people, fortified cities. 
But what had happened? They were scared. Let me turn it around. They found a country with gold and diamond and greatness. But also they found a country with a bit of challenges and a bit of issues. And of course now with a bit of disease. We can either fight and squabble or get down on our knees and pray for the folks who are on the front line because we were told to stay home. And when you're told to stay home, that means that God is saying, I'm watching you, not because you are prisoners, but because I'm protecting you from every ailment, every sickness, every disease. Challenges always come in the promised land, but every land has potential, but potential will always come with challenges. No leaders in any church, in any business, in any country can say they went into a business, they went into a leadership, they went and took over a church, or they went to anything with no challenges. If you have, then it must be a very, 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 very small church or hardly anyone there. Because your challenge will come when you have to develop and grow people. Because at the end of the day, people have their own mind. Because when you go towards potential, it's an opportunity. That means that to dig gold, you have challenges. Diamond digging comes with challenges. Challenges are not there to stop you. It's there as a billboard saying you're on the correct path. And you go ahead and dig and change things accordingly to make it better for yourself in the name of Jesus. Listen, allow me to be an advocate to the giant, just for a short while. The giants were in the promised land to protect what's in that land. They were in the right spot. They were asked to protect the wealth of that land. A giant is not there to stop you. He's there to see you pick up the trophy after you defeat him. I'm going to say it again. A giant is not there to stop you. He's there to see whether you can pick up the trophy after you defeat him. You see, we must be desperate for our victory. We might be desperate for our possession. We might be desperate for the foe to be a forerunner. That when we run a race, a tiredness of pain does not stop us to finish, to, to, to start, does not stop us to the finish line. We must understand that we can be great leaders. It does not matter, brethren, who picks up the trophy as long as we all stand together to win the battle. And we lift up the flag to say, praise the Lord in the name of Jesus. I'm always amazed at the, at the winners. By the way, when you look at my track jacket right now, I got this in 2017 when the London had its marathon. It was the Olympics and I was there and what a wonderful time. So that's where I got this and I decided to put it on today. Here's the entire thing. I'm amazed at the winners at the Olympics. I mean, you know, and, I, and you and I can, can, can stand to guarantee this. That after a race, after a marathon, after a hundred meter, the runner is tired. He's, he's bushed out. But did you ever realize that the winner goes and grabs a flag and he still runs another lap and he looks like he's fresh? Why? Because he's got the winning spirit. A winner never never quits at the finishing line. You know what I'm talking about? When you just got paid, you know you're tired after your work. But how many of you know that you pick up the hands of your spouse and your children and you're in the mall? Why? You want to have dinner in the mall? You're going to go out and have some party? You're going to buy your groceries? You are fresh like the first day you started. That's what it's all about. Leaders don't quit. And Joshua did not quit. But here's the entire thing. All of a sudden, God now approaches Joshua in, in chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. And I want to pause for a second. Did it ever occur to you to ask you the question, why did God choose Joshua? I mean, after all, the one immediately was supposed to have been selected after Moses' death was supposed to be Aaron. But Aaron was not selected. Well, I'm going to explain just now. Moses speaks about the law, the Old Testament, and Joshua speaks about grace, the New Testament. And these are relevant to us as to the days of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you, Joshua, all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to paraphrase this with a revelation grace. And please hear me out. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses in the Old Testament, 
so will I be with you, Yeshua, in the New Testament. I will not leave you or forsake you. Amen. Now, I explained to you, I told you, I'm going to explain to you. This is Moses who died. Israel was supposed to be second in charge. But God asked Moses to anoint, because God asked Moses to anoint Aaron, which means Aaron was supposed to be the next in charge. But when Moses died, God approached Joshua. Why? Because of his faithfulness to his leader, and his leader called Moses laid hands upon him in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 34, you'll read that there, where Joshua, Moses laid hands upon him, and Joshua began to speak the words of Moses, and the people respected Joshua because of that. Can I say this right now? Joshua, Joshua's head, Moses, the father of Joshua, spiritual father Joshua, laid hands on his son. No one else, not an alien, not somebody from out of, out of the country, somebody who knows him. I'm amazed when people bring somebody from outside of the church who have no idea who they are. Because you're a prophet, you have no right to lay hands on another son. Let the father lay hands on that son. And that is what makes a good son at the end of the day. That a father called Moses laid hands on his spiritual son, Joshua, and God knew that. So when Moses died, God did not step to Aaron, but he came to Moses, so he came to Joshua to respect Moses' calling. Because Moses is the one who knew better. Because why? It was Joshua who heard the voice speak to Moses. It was Joshua who saw Moses following God's order. It was Joshua who saw every step of Moses with God spoke to Moses. Hence, God knew Moses was the right choice. Aaron was not. Because Aaron was good to make calf out of gold. But Joshua was good to lead the people of God to the promised land in the name of Jesus. Oh, I come to tell you right now, true leaders will know how to lead the people into victory. True leaders will know how to lead the people into becoming overcomers. True leaders are now to lead the people to become more than conquerors in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. He says, be strong and courageous for you shall cause this people in the land that I swore to their fathers to give you. Okay. Now this is God now speaking to Joshua. So God is now guiding Joshua and he's guiding Joshua just like the Holy Ghost is guiding us today through his word. And so God is guiding Joshua at the time and he tells them, only be strong and very courageous, comma, being careful to according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. Now, I want to, I want to just explain a couple of things here. Llewellyn Charles, welcome, sir. Welcome. This book of the law, God tells him, shall not depart from your mouth. So God explains Joshua, giving him an opportunity to apply God's word. I want you to understand that. Every time that we read the Bible, God is simply giving us an opportunity to follow his word. He's not forcing us. He's not dictating to us. Can I say he's not commanding us? He is simply giving us an opportunity to follow his word. That's what he's telling Joshua. He said, here's an opportunity, follow my word. When it goes, he said, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written on it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. I'm a man of success. I love success. I strive to success. When I was in school, I was not a successful person in athletic because I was a very unwell person. But I thank God for his healing virtues. After my schooling, when I got delivered, I began to put myself into a place of becoming victorious. I won many trophies. I began to always excel. People said, why do you like to excel to win? Because I was a loser when I was at school. Yes, sir. I was a loser. I was unwell. I could not run athletics. I could not do well. I left school early. 
okay? For those who know my testimony, read it in my book. It's all here. Whereby grace answer the voice of faith. It'll help you tremendously. It'll tell you more of my life. Why I refuse to quit in victory. Why do I refuse to quit in anything? I'm, I push, I excel, I pursue, and I possess what I pursue in the name of Jesus. Now, here's the entire thing. Only when we meditate on the word, we'll understand. Now, a cow, a cow whom you slaughter to have steak and beef has got two stomach. And a cow will chuck up its grass and begin to chew and chew and chew and chew. And the cow never spits out the grass, but swallows the grass. The cow has got two stomach and it swallows the grass that it still need into what we call the second stomach. It keeps it there and it swallows the saliva with all the beautiful nourishment into the first stomach. When time is right, the cow will simply take off or lift off the grass from the second stomach and keep chewing it again. That's what God is saying, meditation. God is saying, after you meditate on the word, begin to place it in your stomach called application. Begin to place it in your stomach called obedience. And when the time is right, take it out from the stomach of application and obedience and apply it. When you begin to apply it, you'll find that it'll always come into you as a fresh aroma. And when you apply it according to God's word, then only you'll be successful. We will not be successful because we now read the Bible. We will not be successful because you came to church. You will not be successful because, you know, you can quote scriptures. No, no, no. When you apply the word that God gave us the opportunity to apply, that is when we become successful according to God's word. He says, then you will have good success. Welcome, Pastor Fish. Welcome, Dr. Jacobus Numbers. Good having you all with us, sir. God bless you all. So when, so when will Joshua find success? When he meditate, meditates on the word. When he begins to take the word and apply it all the time. And God says, now only will I give you good success in the name of Jesus. And verse 9, he speaks to him firmly. God speaks to Joshua firmly. He said, have I not commanded you? That's firm. Have I not commanded? Similar language is saying is, did not I tell you this earlier? Why do I have to repeat myself? Did not I tell you to obey? And then God tells him, have I not commanded you? Then he goes and says, be strong and courageous. And because God knew Joshua, he said, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Family of God, I want to say right now, do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. The Lord God is with you all the time. He's not saying go and, and tempt the devil. He's not saying go and tempt scorpion. He's not saying go and tempt the, the snakes. No. He said when you trample snake and scorpions unknowingly, then only you will not die because God will protect you. But when you tempt the devil, you will be attacked and you will be sorry. Because why? You have no sound foundation because your temptation was done in the flesh. As a God wants you to know that you've got to walk in the spirit. And we'll talk about it some other time as well. That means that your faith must be applied to prove you have faith. Faith without works is just a cliche. The key difference isn't that these men did not see the promised land. No, they saw the promised land. It's how they saw it. It's how they saw it. Most of the spies saw the giants and knew there was no way they could win. Caleb and Joshua looked at the giants and knew there was no way God could not win. Let me say that again. When most people saw the spies, they saw the giants and knew there was no way they could win. Hey, you and I can never win anything. But when Caleb and Joshua looked at the giants and they knew they had a God within them, they knew that there's no way that God could not win. That is when the scripture comes in. When we can say in Ephesians, it says something wonderful. Now, 
my God can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you and I can think or imagine according to the power that's within us. If you don't recognize the power within you, you can do zilch, you can do nothing. But when you recognize the power within you, you know it. That's when you can say, I can do all things with Christ because he's the one who strengthens me in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, when God sees a giant, he sees a challenge, he chooses us. He chooses you and I. Because when God sees a giant that selects you, he's not seeing you. He's seeing the David in you. He's looking at the greatness in you. Can I lead you into God's secret for you and I? The giants in your life are standing in the way of God's plan for you and I. And how you look at them is going to change how you deal with them. Oh yes, they are bigger, they are stronger, they are absolutely powerful. But so is your God. Your God is bigger and he's stronger than any other virus or any other obstacle in the name of Jesus. And all God is saying, I am with you. Take me with you. Stand up, stand with me, with you, and see how we can overcome this thing. Could they last even a moment in an arena with Almighty? No. Caleb and Joshua knew the answer. They could both look back at the miracles God had performed in their lives, in the lives of Israel, in the wilderness, and knew beyond a shadow of doubt that God was able to give them every victory, no matter how impossible, unlikely, or yes, even impossible. Why? Because in you and I, God sees a leader who refuses to quit at the finishing line. Family, Philippians chapter 1, as I close, verse 3 says this, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel, and from the first day until now, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish just now in prayer. I trust that not only have you been encouraged and blessed, but I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to challenge you to do something. Can I ask you today to build a covenant with your local church that you're fellowshipping in? Can I ask you not to build a contract? Can I ask you with this, with this covenant today, will you prayerfully sow a seed, a sacrificial seed in your storehouse? Not to me, not to anyone out of, the, out of your church, to your storehouse, your pastor, your pastor who prays for you, your pastor who's on his knees calling on God to protect you. How about you sowing a special seed into that storehouse. He said, your storehouse has been blessing you in prayer. Support them by saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, until we know how to appreciate our local pastors, it'll be tough for you to appreciate God. You may ask how? Well, I will rephrase it to you. It is your pastor that's praying for you, not any church on the outside that does not know you. Oh yes, you may appreciate the teaching, Oh, you may appreciate them, but here's the entire thing. Your pastor knows you. Your pastor cries for you. Your pastor calls on heaven to surround you the wall of fire that no weapon formed against you will prosper. And therefore today, I want to thank you for your faithfulness and bless you. And I pray today in all things that you are being encouraged and you are more than a conqueror. You are victorious in the name of Jesus. Father, touch your children. Bless them encourage them take them to a higher dimension for these are your faithful children in jesus precious and awesome name well thank you so much god bless you that'll be tuned once again tomorrow same time same place same page facebook live in jesus name god bless you all mm -hmm.